So I'm out here at the hives today and I just wanted to do a real quick video and I'll try to keep it as to the point as possible. I just wanted to do a real quick video about winter beekeeping and what you need to look for as far as the health of your hives and the amount of food that they have and the, the kind of the warning signs to look for as far as uh, honeybee health issues are concerned. Um, now it's something for y'all to keep in mind as I go through this video, uh, all beekeeping is local. And what that means is that something that works for me in my area might not work for somebody else somewhere else. So keep in mind that I live in middle Georgia and the climate conditions here are much milder than, you know, somewhere, say, uh, Tennessee or Minnesota. Uh, they're even, and of course, they're um, uh, even, they're a little bit cooler than places like Miami or something like that. So just keep in mind that what works for my climate might not work well for yours. So if uh, you're looking to get some advice off of this video for your bees and you live in Minnesota, uh, I, I would go ahead and close the video uh, because if you take the advice uh, that I'm about to offer and use it in Minnesota, you're going to lose your bees and then you're going to be real mad at the fall line ridge guy. Uh, but anyhow, today it's about 70 or so degrees today and the bees are flying around and I would not advise opening your hives up when it is, uh, you know, 55 degrees or lower because the bees uh, tend to, you know, it's possible they could be in a cluster keeping themselves and their brood warm. So uh, you don't want to disturb that cluster. But today is really a perfect day for this because there's a lot of bees that are out of the hive. So it won't be so, uh, it won't be so crowded in here and we will probably be able to get around and look, see what's going on in the hive. So let's go ahead and open this hive up. We've already got our smoker going. And of, co of course the first thing, you just want to give them a little puff of smoke. You don't want to give them too much because that could cause you some other issues and disturb them a little bit too much. You just want them to be a little bit calmer and uh, smoke is your best bet for that. Now there's a lot of folks that'll say use sugar water, it's a lot easier on the bees and maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Uh, I like to use smoke, it's tried and true and it's been used, it's been an integral part of beekeeping for centuries. So I like to use smoke and I would strongly encourage that you use smoke too. But like I said, if you find something else that works, um, heck, let me know about it. So we'll go ahead and open this one up. And uh, as you can see, <clears throat> I have not quite completed this hive. I need to put some more frames in it. But we'll go ahead and soldier on here. So you just want to give them a little bit more once you get in there. <clears throat> now, in the wintertime, if you open up the top of your hive and you don't see a whole lot of bees, don't freak out. There's no need to freak out. And the reason for that is the population of the hive deer in winter is much lower than in other times of the year. And there's a good chance that they're just farther down in the hive. So I hope that y'all can see this with this camera angle. Uh, if not, um, I'll, I'll try to show these frames to you. But really what you're looking for during winter time, uh, especially this time of year where I am, is food stores. Because right now my bees are building up for springtime. And they're, uh, they're producing a lot of brood right now. And they need a lot of honey or sugar syrup to get them through that. So this time of year, bees are always in danger of starving to death because the populations of the hives are, uh, are going up uh, pretty rapidly in preparation for the uh, spring and summer honey flows. So uh, usually if you don't want to break into the hive too deeply, what you can do is you can just kind of glance up at the top of these frames and see if they've got stores in there. Uh, and if you can't, uh, I'm sure the camera angle, you're not going to be able to see that. But uh, you can just glance there, and if you're satisfied with the amount of honey that's in there, you really don't have to go any farther. Um, alternately, you can take these boxes off and uh, just, uh, just hand weigh them, and if they've got a good bit of weight to them, you can be reasonably sure that there's a fair amount of honey. So you have to judge how much food that you need by the amount of bees that are in the hive. So this hive seems to be pretty, pretty packed with bees right now. Um, this top box doesn't have a lot going on. Let's see if we can find a better frame to look for. And you want to be, of course, as gentle as you possibly can. Any jarring movements tends to upset them. And the gentler you can be, the easier your job is. So you can, I hope you can see this with this camera angle. But right here, you can see that there's a fair amount of, it's either sugar syrup or honey. My guess would be uh, sugar syrup because I have fed these bees. 
Oh, that may be honey. Anyway, they've got a good bit, a good bit right here, uh, right off the bat. Uh, we'll go deeper in the hive and see if we can find some brood and everything else. Um, when I first started beekeeping, I uh, had a tendency to uh, feed my bees uh, pollen during the you know, artificial pollen uh, during the spring. I hope y'all can see him or her rather. That's a very very young bee right there. Uh, anyway, I would feed pollen during the spring, but I got to noticing that in my area pollen starts coming in in the middle of January and the bees the climate is so mild the bees are able to fly um, you know even in January to go out and get that pollen and bring it back and that pollen acts as a protein source for brood rearing so pollen is extremely important to bees but in my area I'm very fortunate I don't have to I don't have to feed my bees pollen here the only thing I really concern myself with is if they have enough sugar syrup or honey, honey ideally, uh, to get through the uh, to get through the winter time and into the spring. All right, let's go ahead and remove this box and set it to the side. Now we're going to get down into the meat of this hive. See if we can oops, let's see if we can get a little bit closer here. So we'll give these bees a little bit of smoke too. This is a relatively new hive. It was a package that was installed last May and they have just been doing really well so far. So uh, let's go ahead, if you can, I like to loosen these frames up from the, uh, from the ends, trying not to smash any more bees than you can help and take them out. See, that's just an end frame. It doesn't have a whole lot going on. And we'll just put that to the side and that loosens everything up so that you can move your frames around and uh, pretty easily so now I don't even have to take this frame out I'm going to so y'all can see but it is uh, it's incredibly heavy I can tell already so let's go ahead and take it out so y'all can check this out so here see this is a great example during the winter time this is the ideal situation this is really what you want to see you have got a lot of capped stores right here and those capped stores are important because if they're not capped they may have a, a larger a, a higher moisture content than what you really need and higher moisture in the winter time can lead to condensation in the hive and that's something that you really want to avoid during the winter time so that tells me that this hive is in probably in pretty decent shape that plus the population of course now, this is a good example too and you can see these uh, cells right in this area are a little bit darker which tells me that they probably uh, raised brood in those cells uh, last year or possibly even recently right here you've got pollen that's stored uh, once they bring it into the hive and uh, store it they actually it's actually called bee bread and the reason for that is uh, they put pollen into these cells and it ferments down just a little bit and uh, it'll keep pretty well forever in that state and uh, so the technical term for that is uh, bee bread and that's the bees protein source when they're uh, rearing brood that's a very 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 important thing for them to have especially in the springtime now something else that you want to keep in mind while you're doing this is uh, diseases now <clears throat> really what you should do I'm trying to find uh, some capped brood for y'all to see and there's some right here but I'll just I'll just show this frame because this is oh no I'll show the next one the next one looks even better uh, you want to look for the brood pattern uh, how the queen is laying her eggs if the brood pattern is what they call a shotgun pattern it's dispersed uh, all over the place and it looks like she just kind of rambled around and there's a lot of missing cells uh, you may have some issues you may have uh, high varroa mite load um, there are quite a few things that you have to you have to take into consideration if you, you're starting to see a shotgun pattern on your on your frames um, but this is a this is just a picture perfect example of a healthy of a healthy frame see right here let's see if we can prop this up with something I guess my hand will have to work okay so right here you can see you've got empty cells where brood has um has already hatched and right in this area you've got capped cells you've got that classic rainbow pattern that you want to see you've got capped cells of brood that's going to hatch very soon and also 
and uh, outside of that you've got some uncapped brood uh, that's in a fairly advanced state uh, that'll be capped pretty soon and then even farther out from that and y'all can't see it but there are eggs in these these uh, these cells right here so this is just absolutely textbook perfect as far as what you should see in your uh, on your frames now i don't know how well y'all can see but this bee right here hatched probably a few hours ago or maybe just now because you can see it's a much lighter color wings are very soft and uh, she's just walking around trying to get her feel of, of of her new life now now all of these bees have got their heads stuck in these cells they're nibbling on some honey probably because i smoked them and that's kind of what they that's that that's what their instinct tells them to do once they smell smoke but you can see that there is a good line of honey uncapped right here for the bees to work on there's also some capped honey right in this area well not over here but over here uh, for the bees to uh, stores for the bees so they can have some later so this is an extremely healthy frame uh, i would i am very satisfied with the health of this particular hive Uh, signs that you need to look for uh, as far as bee health goes and as far as your uh, varroa mite loads is like I said a shotgun pattern on your brood cell caps that may be ripped open and the bees make attempt sometimes to pull diseased brood out and uh, and get that junk out of there so uh, just be aware and make sure you know what to look for as far as your varroa mites now I'll tell you how I do it. This is probably not the way that the book's going to teach you. In fact, I know it's not. I look for those signs, um, but ideally before you start seeing those signs is when you need to do something about it. So what I do is I treat my bees uh, twice a year unless they seem like they start needing it again. And then I'm, if I have to do it three times, I never had to do it three times, I don't think. But I treat my bees twice a year and I use Midaway quick strips. I've had a lot of good success with Midaway quick strips. And I have also just started using oxalic acid. And the jury is really still out on that. I'm not sure. I don't have any very little experience with oxalic acid vaporization, but it's legal here now. So I have just begun using that. Um, I'm not going to take. Yeah, I am. Uh, but just make sure if you need to treat follow your label instructions on the on whatever your whatever you decide to use the reason that i like mitoway quick strip so much is that it's an organic treatment it's formic acid the uh, bees can handle a lot more formic acid levels in the hives than the varroa mites can so it just ends up killing the varroa mites and it's organic like i said you can use it during your honey flow and it's uh, really easy to apply you just got to make sure you follow the label directions and uh that's my that's my preferred that's my preferred method now this is the bottom bottom box i would not expect to see a lot of uh of activity in this bottom box i'll have to uh i'll have to rotate these these boxes i'm sure starting here in maybe i don't know maybe a few weeks but anyhow uh back to the mighty way quick strips make sure you apply it according to the label directions and you'll be It'll be totally fine. Oops. Be. May not make it. Um, but ideally what you need to do is do a mite count on your bees. And usually, well the most scientific and accurate way to do it is to get a, a sample of about 300 bees, which is equivalent to about half of a cup. And, oh I was wrong, look at that, look at that. That looks great. You've got that good rainbow pattern, lots of brood that has hatched lots of brood that is uh, lots of eggs lots of larvae in those cells and you've got some a little bit of <coughs> excuse me a little bit of honey and some bee bread on the edges that's a good frame too oh that's an excellent oh and there's the queen let's see if we can get a video of her All right, so I got distracted by the queen. Sorry about that. 
what I was talking about is the alcohol wash. You need to take a sample of about 300 bees, which is a half of a cup, and make sure you get those bees off of a frame that is uh, relatively, uh, relatively young because you're going to get nurse bees off of that, and the nurse bees are uh, not the worker bees, and they're the ones that are uh, the, the newest ones, and you're going to get the most accurate count from nurse bees. Get a half of a cup, uh, put them in like a mason jar with a screen on the top, and uh, uh, dump alcohol in there, and yeah, it kills the bees. It's really brutal on the bees, and that's why I don't like to do it. And <clears throat> then drain all your alcohol off, swish them around in there for a couple of minutes, drain all your alcohol off, and uh, count the number of mites that are in that alcohol once you dump it off. And that will give you an extremely accurate count of your uh, mite loads in your hives. If you've, I can't remember the exact numbers. Uh, I'll provide a link to good rules of thumb as far as, uh, get OCD, I need to make sure the queen's okay. Uh, there she is, she's fine. Um, I'll pro provide a link to what you need to know as far as uh, what your numbers of mites mean because I really don't check my mite numbers anymore. I just go by when I need to treat uh, a couple of times a year, once in the spring, once in the fall, and that has worked well for me. Don't go and do that um, because I do it. You'd you be much better off uh, checking your bees, checking your uh, checking the load, the mite load in your hives. Uh, that'll help you learn what your hives are going to look like under different conditions, uh, different mite loads, and you'll learn a lot by doing that, number one, and you'll get a more accurate representation of what you need to do to your hives different times of year. Of course, you can also do a sugar shake, and I'll provide a link to uh, the method on how to do a sugar shake. That does not kill bees, but it gives you a less accurate mite count, so it's really up to you which one you choose. Um, just be aware that some methods are more accurate than others. Um, oop, that one didn't go there. Now it's fairly important, it's not like an emergency, but it's fairly important to put these frames back in the order that you took them out because the bees work very hard getting this exact pattern together and it works for them and you want to leave the bees with what they have done because bees make better beekeepers than beekeepers make bees. In other words, bees know how to do a better job at keeping their own house than we do. Um, so that's pretty well all I've got for today. I just wanted to do a quick check on this hive and video it and let y'all uh, and let y'all uh, check it out with me. That's uh, this is a very healthy hive. I'm very satisfied with this hive. We're gonna go ahead and put it all back together and uh, and be done. So in summary, the things that you need to look out for this time of year. Number one, the amount of honey or sugar syrup that they have got, they have got available. Now, the second thing you need to check and make sure they've got enough pollen because that's why they have the bees get their protein. And you also need to make sure that they are uh, low on diseases because this time of year, you're uh, creating bees or the hive is making bees that will produce the bees that are going to go out and harvest your nectar and get your honey crop. Now, uh, one more note. As far as, um, crap, what was I going to say? Oh, one more note as far as feeding bees, and uh, let me just go back into this hive to show you what I do. This right here is an in-hive feeder. It is, uh, takes liquid syrup and holds about a gallon. I got mine from a company in somewhere it's mother load product and you can find them on the internet i'll provide a link in the description um, so this is an excellent uh, way to feed your bees during warmer times do not fill this thing full of uh, sugar syrup when it's 30 degrees outside because you'll create a lot of condensation in your hives and that condensation will literally create a rainstorm inside of the hive and you will rain sugar syrup and moisture down on these bees once it condenses in the top of the hive and then they'll be in their cluster freezing to death when it's 25 degrees outside and you're going to kill your hive by doing that. During the winter time when it's super cold your best bet is to make uh, what they call fondant. I'll provide a link for that recipe and you can also use sugar bricks 
And either of those two methods work okay as far as feeding your bees uh, during the winter time if you must. Now of course your best bet is to leave them enough honey during the uh, summertime so that they can, and fall so they can get through winter by themselves. But if you get greedy and take all their honey away uh, so you can eat well over the winter, they're not going to be able to eat well over the winter. So just make, uh, just consider that and honey is always better for bees than sugar syrup. Um, one more thing I wanted to add. Uh, if you have to do with feeding. Oh, uh, in my climate, and this doesn't work everywhere, in my climate I can get away with feeding sugar syrup in the winter time. And the way that I do that is if the population of the hive is strong enough, what I can do is find a stretch of days where the weather is forecast to be 55 degrees or at, it'd be safer to have it at 60 degrees or more because the bees can and you need probably a week stretch of that at least well probably five five or seven days at least of that uh, and the bees can go ahead and get that out of there and put it in their cells and have it available uh, before cold weather hits. Now like I said you need a good strong hive for that so that they can go ahead and get it out and you don't end up with condensation issues and you also need to uh, need an, uh, enough time so that they can get it in there, get it in the cells and put it into a, a more usable state for them. But uh, anyway don't try that <coughs> in Minnesota or Canada or where it's really cold during the winter time because all you're going to do is uh, create condensation and uh, kill your hive. But anyhow, guys, I really appreciate y'all watching um, and uh, I, will, I will see y'all next time. So I don't want anybody to think that if you have a small amount of honey on a few frames in your hive that you're in good shape. Make sure you've got a fair amount in these hives, especially this time of year. I would, uh, I would guess you probably need 15, uh, maybe 20 pounds to get you into the spring season because during the fall uh, you're probably gonna, you're gonna need about 40 pounds in order for the bees to get through the winter time. So number one, start preparing for winter time during the fall. Make sure the bees have got 40 pounds of honey left over so that they can get through the winter without you having to disturb them too much. But just make sure they've got enough food this time of year and if you have to feed, feed. Um, if it's too cold to feed uh, sugar syrup, get you some fondant or sugar bricks. Make those and those will be okay. Uh, make sure your, your uh, bees have got um, a low, uh, there's not a lot of disease going on in your hives. Check your mite levels and if you, if you need to treat, treat because if you have a high mite load you're not going to get anywhere in the spring and your hive is going to collapse. Make sure your queen's doing a good job as far as laying. Check her laying pattern and uh, make sure the, uh, she's not laying, <coughs> when, make sure she's not laying a shotgun pattern. Make sure she's filling up uh, pretty much every cell. Uh, and she's not skipping cells and because that could be a sign of a failing queen. Um, but besides that, if your bees are bringing in pollen, if your bees are flying, and if your bees are happy and all your woodenware looks good, you don't have any rot going on on your woodenware, uh, you should be in pretty good shape. <coughs> also make sure you got plenty of room for the bees to expand because they're expanding a lot this time of year. Um, but anyway guys, I really appreciate you watching. If you want to see more beekeeping videos, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe if you, if you haven't already. And uh, I will see you next time.